Today we're taking a look at a new accessible cell phone option for the visually impaired community. Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to The Blind Life where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. Here on this channel, I make videos about living life with vision impairment and an emphasis on the assistive technology that can help make it awesome. So if that kind of content sounds good to you, please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on notifications so you'll always be alerted every time I put out a new video. So this is the Mini Vision 2 with its uh, low vision friendly display and screen reader, built in screen reader. It's designed specifically for the blind and visually impaired community, but would also be great for the senior community as well. Let's take a quick look at what comes in the box. Then we will talk about the hardware, the features, and at the end, I'll give you my thoughts on the Mini Vision 2. The packaging has a very minimalistic design, nothing flashy. You've got a drawing image of the Mini Vision 2 here on the top of the box. Box opens up, swings open, and we have a manual. This is like a quick start guide for the phone probably warranty information. Then you have the phone on the top here. This little flap, where is it? There it is, opens up, revealing all the goodies down below. You have the charging cradle. This allows you to do wire, essentially wireless charging. You have your charging plug, the wall outlet brick. You have your charging cable. This is a micro USB cable inside this bag. Here we have a set of headphones, just a regular set of earbuds. Uh, this, it doesn't seem like this has the, oh wait, no, actually. Oh, and it does have a controller for uh, possibly answering phone calls. Not sure about that, but it definitely has some kind of button controller on the headphones. And then a nice little bonus here in the bottom, we have a protective case for the phone. This is a rubber TPU style slip on case. It's not going to add any crazy protection against falls or drops. Uh, some slight protection, but it's mainly going to protect the phone against getting all scratched up, setting it down. It'll also definitely keep the phone nice and clean. With this being a white phone, it's going probably going to get dirty pretty quickly with fingerprints and all that. So having the case on here is going to prevent that from happening. The case color is kind of this clear, semi-transparent, frosted uh, material. The style of the phone is what's called a candy bar style and it's a throwback to the older cell phones of the early 2000s. Uh, if you can remember what the Nokia's, the old Nokia's look like, that's what this is going to remind you of. The phone is white with black buttons so it offers a lot of great contrast between the buttons and the background which is going to be great for low vision users. The front of the phone here consists of two elements basically the upper half of the front is the screen the bottom half is the buttons and the keypad as well as the menu and navigational buttons the top of the phone has an led for the flashlight the bottom has the micro usb port for charging as well as the headphone port 3.5 millimeter headphone jack then on the back of the phone you have the camera the SOS button and the grill for the speakers. This is where the voice audio comes out of. This is also where when you send a phone to the speaker phone, that's where the audio also comes out of. As far as the button layout, you have an upper left button and an upper right button. Those are menu buttons and a back button. Just below the upper left button, you have the call button that has some raised tactile bumps and they are lined up in a vertical line. Just below the upper button on the right here, you have the end call button or the hang up button. And that has some raised dots that are in a horizontal line. Then in between these four buttons, you have a four way directional button or directional pad. North, south, east, west, or up, down, left, right. Then in the center of that four way, four -way directional pad, you have an OK button, a large OK button. 
This is what you use to get into menus. It's what you, you use to confirm choices. It's also, long pressing it, also initiates a voice command. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Then below this little section of buttons, you have the normal dial pad, keypad, numbers one through zero, one through nine with a zero, and then an asterisk and a pound symbol, or a, as the kids say it these days, a hashtag. <laughs> It sounded so old saying that. And other than the SOS button on the back here, those are all the buttons, as I mentioned. So all the controls, all the functions of the phone are done with these buttons on the face here. As far as connectivity, this is a GSM unlocked phone. That means it will work on all GSM networks, most GSM networks. Uh, here in the US, that's AT&T, T-Mobile. Those are the big guys. But then there's a bunch of smaller GSM networks that use AT&T and T-Mobile towers, piggyback off the, those networks. Now, bear in mind that currently there are some networks that this won't work on, uh, networks like Verizon and Sprint and some of the smaller ones like Cricket and Consumer Cellular, I believe. For a complete list of what this will work on, I recommend going to the Mini Vision 2 website. I will have a link in the description down below. As far as local connectivity, it supports Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. The website claims that it is a full 4G phone supporting 4G, 3G, and 2G, as well as VOLTE or Voice Over LTE. When you purchase the phone, you actually get three month free service to Mint Mobile. Uh, that's what I have connected it to. And I'll say that where I live here in Kentucky, I didn't have any problems connecting it to Mint Mobile. You put your SIM in, you go to the website, you put in the activation number and it fires right up. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, with unlocked phones, there's never a guarantee if it's gonna work in your area, even if it says it's supported on the network that you're trying. So definitely do some research. As I mentioned before, check out the website, see what it says about its, the supported networks, and even maybe contact the network in your area and make sure that this type of phone is supported. Being an unlocked phone, if you call up AT&T, they're not gonna have any idea probably who this is or what this phone is. So you'll need to give some of the specs to them, like what network frequencies the phone claims that it supports to make sure that that is supported in your area. For battery life on the website, it says for standby time, it will last upwards of 200 hours, which is crazy. Talk time, it will last for seven hours. That's continually talking. If you wanna to talk to somebody for seven hours, you will be able to do that on this phone. <laughs> and that doesn't really surprise me. If you remember these old style phones, uh, you could plug it up and then go like a whole week without having to plug it up again. It does have a camera and the camera is a two megapixel camera. Whenever you wake up the phone, you get some status, some current status information. Home screen, 1107 AM. Wednesday, April 28th, battery level, 64% remaining. Network status, mint, 4G plus, three out of four. One new text message. The phone has a built-in screen reader. 100% uh, of the phone is read out loud to you. Um, that's the nice thing about this phone is it doesn't matter where you are, it's going to speak out loud what's on the screen. To navigate through the menu system, you use the up and down directional pad. So if I click down. Phone, contacts, messages. If I press to the right or the left, that's how I jump into the volume menu. So to set the volume. And this works anywhere, anywhere that I am on the phone, if I press to the right or left, I'm gonna jump into that volume menu. Volume settings, voice, 11 of 15. Uh, currently my volume is set to 11 out of 15. So this does get pretty loud, which is nice. So real quickly, I'll go through the main menu so you guys can get an idea of what features are available. Phone, contacts, messages, one, alarm, calendar, camera, gallery, FM radio, light detector, color detector, banknote recognizer, calculator, voice recorder, notes, flashlight, weather, emergency, where am I, user manual, settings. So if I wanted to interact with one of these options, I just press the OK button. Phone, 
call contact. One really nice thing that I, I like that I haven't seen before on other phones is that you can you can assign a speed dial phone number or you can assign a quick launch to one of the apps. So for example, my number two button here, I've programmed it to be the camera. So if I press and hold that, camera, it automatically jumps me into the camera as kind of a quick shortcut. So if there's a couple apps that you're gonna be using a lot, maybe you're gonna be using the voice recorder, the weather app, uh, the FM radio, you can assign those to some of your speed dial options here. So you do have quite a bit of customizable options on this. You can customize a lot about the display and the audio output as well. Display. I'm gonna jump into the display. Display. Brightness. You can adjust the brightness. Sleep mode delay. Sleep mode delay. Font. So you have some different font options that you can customize as well. Font size. Font size. Font size. Large. Checked. Very large. Not checked. Very large. Not checked. See what the very large looks Display. like. Display. Font size. Bold. Not checked. You can choose to bold your text as well. Text and background colors. Let's check out the different color schemes you can, you can choose from. Text and background colors. White on black. Checked. Black on white. Not checked. Blue on yellow. Not checked. Yellow on blue. Not checked. Yellow on black. Not checked. Black on yellow. Not checked. Black on yellow. Not checked. Yellow on black. Not checked. So let's do yellow on black. That's... Text and background colors. That's a very popular color. Display mode. Icon and text. Checked. So here you can choose what's displayed when you're, you're going through the menus. You can do, right now I have it set for icon and text, but you can choose icon, not checked. Icon only. Text, not checked. Text only. Text, not checked. Icon and text. Checked, icon and text. Checked. Or like I'm doing icon and text both together. Vocalization. Screen reader, checked. Now I've turned off the screen reader and I still get the, the menu clicks and all of that. Um, but this is great. Like I said, some users are just going to need the large print high contrast screen. They're not gonna need the screen reader. So it's nice that you can turn that off. Language. Language, you can go in here and choose the different language for the phone. Uh, I think there's over 20 different languages, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like 28 different languages. I'm not sure what they all are. Um, for sake of time, I'm not gonna go into all that. You can definitely check the website to get that information, I'm sure. But chances are, it's going to have the, the language that you're looking for. So I mentioned before that it has a voice element, um, and I wasn't actually talking about the screen reader. It has a built-in, kind of a simplified digital assistant. Uh, so you can give voice commands to perform functions. The way you do that is long pressing the OK button. You'll get a prompt to give the command after the beep. And it works OK. It works not, it's not too bad. You, there is a little bit of a learning curve to figure out what you can say. So I'll show you what I mean here. If I long press. Speak after the beep. Open camera. Sorry. Request misunderstood. Please try again. Phone. So it didn't understand the command, but if I simplify it. Speak after the beep. Camera. Camera. Phone. You are able to make phone calls and send text messages with your voice as well. So if I press and hold. Speak after the beep. Call Sam. You want to call Sam, mobile? So that is really the limit of the interaction, the voice interaction. So she asked me if I want to call the mobile number. I have to physically press the button here to complete that action. And now it's ringing. I also wanted to quickly talk about sending text messages. Uh, so you can do this with your voice or the old fashioned way through the phone using the keypad. I'll show you real quick the voice option if I long press the OK button. Speak after the beep. Send a text message to Sam. You want to send a message to Sam, 
Mobile. Once again, that's about the extent of the voice interaction, so I have to click OK. Edit box. Type text message. Now, I'm in a, an edit box and I can type out my message. I can say... Capital G, capital H, D, E, J, K, L, J, K, L, M, N, O, space. Capital keyboard, capital P, capital Q, capital R, capital S. Numeric keyboard, normal keyboard, A, M. Input special character, period, comma, comma. So you can, with some practice, you can quickly type out a, a text message, but I can also dictate a message. So if I long press the voice button again here. Speak after the beep. How are you? Question mark. How are you? It enters that text in for me. So it's got everything I want. I just press the OK button. Sending. Message send. and I got the text message here on my other phone. I wanted to show the camera real quickly. Uh, it has a nice feature where it clicks whenever the camera is engaged, whenever the camera is turned on. This is an audio cue, so if you don't have vision, you'll know that the camera is on and waiting for, uh, waiting for you to take a picture. Camera. So you can hear it clicking. I'm gonna take a picture of my plant here, and I will show this picture on the screen. Got the picture. Okay, so I wanna test out some of the low vision related features. Now, since a lot of these utilize the camera, I've come down to my living room where I've got this very large window. It's providing a lot of light, a lot of natural light. Any of these features that use the camera, like the color identification, they're gonna perform much better in good lighting. Something to keep in mind. So the first one we'll try is light detector. Now the way it works is when I click on it, you're gonna hear a tone, and the higher pitch the tone, the more light. So if I point over here where it's darker, low pitched, point over here where the light is, <laughs> very high pitch. On screen, you also have a percentage that increases and decreases with the light amount. Color detector. Color detector. So I have a book of colors here, colored paper, all different colors of the rainbow. Uh, so let's see how it does. Color detector. Announce colors. So when you click into this, you have some options. You can announce colors. Find color. You can find a particular color, which is an interesting feature that I haven't seen on other devices. So let's announce colors. This means whatever color it sees in the center of the screen, it's going to tell you what color that is. Now I want to turn it Black. to where it's not getting White a glare. Red. Red, it Black. got that. White. Let's see if Black. it will White. recognize this yellow. Gray dark. Orange light. Yellow light. Orange. Yellow, okay. Gray dark. Black. Gray dark. Gray dark. What about the pink? Light. Pink light. Pink, got Gray it. Dark. Black. What about a blue? White, blue light, purple, blue. orange light, black. So now I'm going to open it up to this blue color again, and I'm going to put it on find color. find color. So now I can choose the color that I'm looking for, and then as I scan around, when it sees that color, it will let me know. Red, burgundy, turquoise, blue. Blue, there we go. So I'm gonna click OK. Now it has a blue outline on the screen, kind of visually indicating what color it's looking for. So I'm gonna scan around. And as soon as I pointed it at the blue paper, I got a vibration and a little bell tone. Yeah, definitive. It sees that blue no problem. Banknote recognizer. Now let's try the banknote recognizer. I'm going to click OK, and we have our clicking letting us know that the camera is activated. I'm going to pull out a random U.S. bank note here, point the camera at it. One dollar. One dollar. Got it. Let's try it again. One dollar. One dollar again. Five dollars. Five dollar. Had to move it around a little bit for that one, but it got it. Overall construction of the phone is really good, actually. It is plastic, of course, as feature phones were back then, 
but it's very solid. Uh, there's no movement in the phone between the, the back battery cover, the battery door, and the main housing of the phone. There's no creaking if you squeeze it. It's a very solid connection, the battery door here. There's no overhanging uh, plastic or anything like that. The buttons are sufficiently clicky, I guess you could say. Let me see, put it up by the microphone. <laughs> Speaking of the buttons, uh, the buttons, the keypad buttons and the navigational buttons, they are a little flat. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of the old flip phones that had the flat buttons. But I will say there is, they're not completely flat, they're, they are raised slightly. There is a nice gap between all the buttons. And a lot of the buttons, especially the menu and navigational buttons, have some really strong tactile elements. There's also a very prominent bump on the 5, which is going to allow you to find all the other numbers. Visually, also, on the call and the in call button, you have some color contrast. So the call button has a green element on it, and the in call has a red element. So if you do have some vision, you'll be able to utilize that. The GPS did a good job, a pretty good job, of getting my current location when I did the where am I. However, the weather isn't so accurate. Um, probably about 40% of the time, it gave the, the correct weather for the city that I'm in. It actually gave the correct city. But the other 60% of the time, it said I was in a city that's about an hour away from me. Now, in my case, that's not a big deal because an hour away from me has the same weather that I do. <laughs> so it's okay, I guess, but just something to keep in mind uh, in some other areas, it might you might have different results. Something else important to take note of is that some of these features will not work if you're not connected to internet. Things like the weather, the GPS, and especially the voice commands will not function unless you have either mobile data on your phone plan or you're connected to Wi-Fi. Two options for charging the phone. You can obviously plug the cable. Charging started battery level 40%. Plug it into the phone directly to charge that way. Or you can use the provided charging cable. The cable, you, you plug the cable up and just set it on a desk somewhere, and this allows you to do wireless charging. So you plug it up once, and you don't have to mess with uh, continuously trying to plug in the phone. You just set the phone into the cradle, and it starts to charge for you. Okay guys, so that was a look at the new Mini Vision 2, an accessible feature phone for the visually impaired and senior market. One thing to note right away, this is not going to be a good choice for anyone that wants to use a smartphone. This is going to be for that area of the population that doesn't want to deal with a smartphone but still needs an accessible cell phone option. I know some people will ask, you cannot, at least as of right now, you cannot install apps on this. I imagine the company will be continuing to put out updates and adding new features and all that uh, as time goes on. I've already done two updates to the demo model that I have, so I'm sure new features will come in the future, but you yourself as a customer cannot add apps to it. It does not have Facebook on it, it does not have WhatsApp, it doesn't have Twitter, it doesn't have any of that right now. Maybe in the future, I don't know. I've been using it for about a week now, making, receiving phone calls and text messages, and haven't had any problems, haven't had any dropped calls, call quality sounds fine. I received the text messages quickly uh, without any issues. So the price of the Mini Vision 2 is right around $300. It is available now. I will have a link to the website down in the description where you can get more information. But that is it. A huge thank you to the guys behind the Mini Vision 2 for letting me make this video for you. If you have any questions for me, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to help out. If you like the video, please consider liking it and sharing it on social media. Helps out the channel. And if you'd like to further help out the channel, be sure to check out the Blind Life merchandise available on Amazon and Teespring. And also possibly becoming a member of the Blind Life. All that information is also down in the description. Thanks again for watching, guys. As always, Sam with the Blind Life. I'll see you next time.